Hello and welcome to another episode of Attacking Third, a CBS Sports Soccer Podcast. I'm Sandra Herrera, lead NWSL writer for CBS Sports. Joined today, as always, by my colleague and co-host, Lisa Roman, NWSL analyst and broadcaster for CBS Sports. On today's episode, we've got a special interview following the 2023 NWSL draft. Be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube so that you never miss out on our episodes or whenever we go live with our exclusive interviews. Today, we welcome to the show the number one draft pick, newest member of Angel City FC, two caps with the United States Women's National Team so far, 18-year-old, youngest draft pick in NWSL history. Look, already so many accolades. <laughs> Alyssa Thompson, welcome to the show. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you. Yeah, we're we're so we're so thrilled to have, to have you join us here on the show. Your first time with attacking third, so we're uh, we're excited to to chat with you a little bit. We're about a week removed, almost since. Uh, the NWSL draft and let's look we got to start there of course with you so yeah you look to to have been at home during the draft surrounded by tons of loved ones family friends lots of smiling people tell us a little bit about the draft day uh, where were you who was with you and what was that overall experience like for you uh, during the event yeah so well I'll just start from when I woke up because I woke up and then got ready for school and then I went to school for a little bit had a class and then left from there and started like my whole getting ready process. Um, I was with my sister, which was nice. So we were just together at school and then left to go to the Nike LA headquarters, um, which was cool. And then, yeah, that whole day I was not at school. I wasn't really thinking about it because I had a lot of work to do, but When I got there, I was starting to get a little bit nervous, like sweating a little bit. Um, But I was with my sister, Giselle, which was nice. And my little sister, Zoe, who like distracts me a lot. And she's just like a ball of like energy. So it really helped to just like take my mind off of it. And then, yeah, I was just I was really nervous the whole day. Um, And then leading up to the draft, just sitting on the couch, like waiting for my name to get called was very scary, too. Um, But I was lucky to be surrounded like by my friends and my family um, who have been with me throughout my whole journey. So it was super cool. Yeah, I wanted to just follow up on that, because despite like everything leading up to draft day, whether they're random headlines or, or not. The, that type of event can absolutely play on one's nerves, right? No matter where you're potentially going to land within the draft order. So was there anything apart? You mentioned like your sister sort of being like a calming presence. So was there anything else that you sort of like were reaching for or looking to, to like help you sort of stay calm? Is it like a particular go-to snack or a particular go-to beverage that you sort of go to to sort of help ease you out during a day like that? <laughs> um honestly like I didn't really eat that much because the whole day I was like (laughs) running around and like doing um just like a bunch of things before like just getting ready and stuff and greeting people that were coming so I didn't really eat that much so Mm -hmm. I I don't think I helped myself (laughs) getting on nervous I was just like I embrace the nerves, I guess. Yeah, don't worry. We won't tell Angel City that you didn't even eat on draft day. They're going to have you on like a nutrition schedule ready to go. I I love that you started your day um, with us explaining it to us, saying that you went to school, you had a class. Um, I want to know about that day at school and also Friday. The draft was Thursday night. Did you go to school on Friday the next day after the draft? Yeah, I had an in class like an in-class essay in the morning so we have late start on that day so we started at 10 o'clock but I had to get there early to take the in-class that I missed on Thursday so I went on there and took my in-class essay and my teacher just like welcomed me it was like congratulations and stuff like that and then I took my in-class and then school was like people were coming up to me and congratulating me and stuff like that, which is really cool. And it, um, a bunch of my friends were just like saying how cool it was that I was um, draft pick and just like, they, they knew I play soccer and stuff and like that I go places a lot for it. So, um, but they were just all super proud of me, I think, which was really nice. So that's, that's so special. I mean, yeah, yeah, when you're in high school, as you are, and you're constantly traveling for tournaments and, and meetings and uh, trainings all over the place, your friends kind of get to know like, oh, you can't hang out because you're always playing <laughs> soccer. I get it. I was, I was there all the time. So yeah. it was, I mean, for you, even as, as the youngest draft pick and still in high school, you're have a very different experience than 
other draft picks this year that are maybe in college or out of college already and, and finish their semester. How do you kind of compartmentalize like going to school the morning after you're the number one overall draft and having to write an essay? Is there any <laughs> part of you that's like, come on, mom and dad, can I stay home? <laughs> um, I feel like I kind of wanted to go to school because I don't know, I feel I've always kind of had this balance in my life with soccer and whatever else, like hanging out with friends or going to school. It's kind of just like, uh, like part of my routine, just balancing soccer and something else. Um, I think it kind of helps take my mind off of just the soccer portion. Cause I I'm like always doing that like day in, day out. So I feel like just that little, um, like it's kind of like just the out that I have for just being myself and like outside of soccer and stuff. Nice. I mean, we're, we're chatting about it, you know, you being the, the youngest player ever drafted in NWSL history. And uh, there were some uh, leading into the draft, there were some uh, new rules and regulations uh, that were dropped um, uh, ahead of this particular version of the draft. Uh, players who are uh, under 18 can, you know, declare themselves eligible for the draft and enter the, the draft selection process. So um, for you, when, when you were sort of looking at this you know, this, this build up to this moment, whether it was just the, the 2022 that you're coming off of, what was, what were some of the factors that maybe helped you make the decision to enter the draft now at this point in your career? Yeah. Um, well, just a big thing for me was also getting my education while being a pro. So there were just a lot of talks about if my education would be like valued as well, like while I was playing soccer and, um, yeah, and making that like now known and stuff like that was nice. Um, and uh, just like knowing that I had that other piece outside of soccer was nice. And then also just like the big part was like being able to get better on on and off the field, um, just as a person and playing and maturing in this environment, um, which I wouldn't be able to do like anywhere else because it's just like, a whole different thing I have to grow up like kind of at 18 so um yeah the the biggest factor was the education piece though like knowing that I'd be still be able to get an education while playing soccer that was a big factor for me and my family well that's that's good that you were able to get some some clarity on that before you were mm -hmm. you know make that decision to register so, so what was that like what was was it finally like, okay, like the deadline is this day I got to make sure that I registered <laughs> by this day walk us through actually uh, registering for the draft yeah, well, I think I registered like the last day that I could or something, but um, yeah, we know, we know we were <laughs> refreshing. We wanted to see your name. I'm going to be honest here. No, full transparency on attacking third. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I don't like me and my family were still like, it was a very tough decision for me, um, choosing between going to Stanford and going pro. So I I don't know. It came down to like the last minute where I'm just like, okay, I'm going to do this and I'm going to go all in with this. And this is my decision. And then once I made that decision, my dad was like, okay, we need to register for the draft. And then I was like, okay. Um, but it all went really quickly and it was super easy. So, yeah. So after you registered, of course, the cutting it close to the deadline, but draft day comes and you get chosen number one overall by Angel City. And Alyssa, you're from LA, you currently live in LA, and now you get to stay in LA with Angel City. How important was it for you to stay local and, and stay in California, maybe near your family? Yeah, it was super important to me. Um, being with my family is just one of the best things for me and being next with my sisters. Um, they're just like, they've been the best and they've helped me get to where I am. And my whole family has sacrificed so much for me, um, um, my whole soccer career. So being able that, for them to be here and being able to watch my games all the time and uh, just showing their support there would be, is like amazing to me. And also being able to be close to school and still going, I'm at, I'm at school right now. Like I have a class later. <laughs> so uh, just being able to like, do this that I wouldn't be able to do anywhere else and being able to like go to prom do all my senior senior activities like stuff like that makes me feel really connected and like high, at like a high school student still which is super nice um 
and joining Angel City is just an amazing club and they're growing so much um, as a organization. Um, just everything they stand for outside of soccer um, is just, they're such an amazing club and their fan base is so amazing. Like I went to one of the games and uh, it was the loudest game that I've ever been to for a women's soccer game. Like I was shocked, honestly. I was like, wow, this is the coolest thing ever. Like I've never seen something like this for a woman's game and just seeing all the support they had was super cool. I love that you're talking about going to an Angel City game and, and we're going to ask you about that for sure. But I want to take a step back because you've now talked about Giselle, your sister, Zoe, your little sister. Um, you play soccer with Giselle a lot and, and you're clearly very close to your family. Also, thanks for doing this while you're at school. We really appreciate that. <laughs> sure. um, but what was uh, the reaction from your sisters, maybe, and specifically your little sister, Zoe, in the decision that you would be staying locally and and you get to play professionally? What was their response to that? Um, my little sister is just super excited. She loves soccer. She's also a soccer player. So just me, me being able to be here and like she can go with her teammates to watch our games and stuff like that. I think she's really proud of me. Um, and just like it's like cool to have a cool older sister. Yeah. So <laughs> that was um like cool to see. And Giselle, um, uh, she was really excited for me and she was happy that I got to stay and like have the best of both worlds for myself like that would be something that like she would want if she was in my position so um, yeah she was just really excited that I got to stay home I think she was a little upset that she didn't get her own room because when I would leave her college that she would get her own room but uh, yeah she was mostly happy I think <laughs> I love that I love that so much be ca be careful when you start when you start the <laughs> she might try to inch in on their squatties rights of um, angel city you know they they really made a statement last last year during their inaugural season in nwsl you know lisa's from philly i'm from chicago and and even we managed to to get out to a couple games last season and they were very very memorable so for you was it just like one game or was it like a handful of games that, that you uh, were able to attend at the bank last year and um, you know, prior to there being in uh, a pro a pro NWSL team in uh, in California, did, did you attend any other uh, games at the bank at all? Um, the game that I went to was my first game, and that was the only game I went to. Um, it was super hard to get tickets for the games. Like, I got <laughs> I got that ticket like from one of my like family friends that had extra tickets, so like I wasn't even like really planning to go. So I was like super happy that I got was able to get a ticket um but yeah that was my that was the only game that I went to but I gen, like wanted to go back to more after that um I don't think they I don't remember like I went later in the season but I don't mm -hmm. think they had another uh, another home game or something like that but I definitely would have gone to more games um yeah well, you're going to be at a lot of them now. <laughs> yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll be at a lot of them now. And hopefully it'll be a little easier to get tickets this time around. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Let's talk a little bit about the soccer side of things, because at Attacking Third, we do that. We get into the nitty gritty of, of what's happening on the pitch. Um, and for you, most recently, you've been training with a boys team playing with them playing against them I, I think since about 2020 um of course there's the physicality of that playing against boys that are maybe bigger stronger faster than you a little bit older and that's different and allows you to adapt your game uh to be a little bit more technical because you can't match the physicality but what is one thing that you learned about yourself or your playing style since you started to train with boys full-time yeah I think that I've learned like beating people just off of like a huge touch or a big like touch and run type of movement like doesn't work all the time <laughs> obviously like the boys will just get in front of you and push you off the ball or get there before you so I think definitely like taking on defenders 1v1s using more skill and then making that big touch or like change of mm -hmm. pace stuff like that um that's really helped me in my game nice you you know you you closed out your 2022 with a ton of milestones. I, I tossed some of them up at the top of the episode, but at accomplishing these things at such a young age, whether it was, you know, an appearance in U20 World Cup or earning your first caps with the senior women's national team. Um, 
you know, just sort of maybe focusing in on those two areas, what, what were maybe some of the differences you experienced going from your time with the youth team to the senior team? Yeah, for sure. I think on the youth teams, like, I think that really prepared me for what the national team would be like. Um, that it, like, it helped me get to those steps to be where I was to be able to get called up to the um, full national team. But I was really not expecting when when I got there, I was not expecting. I was I thought I expected what um like I thought I knew what would happen there. But it's totally different from like anything I've ever experienced before. Um, it was really like a pro environment. Um, they're all treated like so amazing. They get um just like the best of everything because obviously they're the best players in the world. And just being able to train with the best like players in the world um for weeks um on end was really eye-opening for me and it just showed me like what I really needed to work on or things that I like would take me to the next level and learning from those players is just was really amazing um and just being able to be with them um was a dream come true really because I look up to all of those players and they're just really amazing people too like um not just soccer players like they were all super welcoming and just really helpful and like getting me in the swing of things especially like the younger players just making sure that like they've been in my position before so they knew like coming into their camp the first time like a Ashley Sanchez really helped me a lot um Emily Fox and Sophia Smith Naomi Gurma they were just super helpful even like Sophia Huerta she was just amazing and like super comforting to me so um yeah so you said, I mean, playing alongside these players, they're they're legendary. And I'm sure you grew up watching them. You just name dropped a couple that helped you, but were there any players on the senior national team? Don't worry, we won't tell them. That you were kind of like, wow, I get to play with you. Or like, was there any bit of that like foul, wow or, or shock factor? Because some of these players you watched growing up as a little kid. Yeah, I will definitely. Well, Megan Rapino, obviously she's just, like a legend and icon in her own like sense but I think like Lindsay Horan just she's an amazing person too and she was very helpful um and it was super cool to meet her Rose Lavelle also just amazing person to see um yeah who, oh Alex Morgan of course like she was just like wow I can't believe I'm playing with her right now um those are the people that like are part of like kind of who I've looked up to as you take this next step in your career um, and you've had different experiences with the U-20 World Cup and, and playing on the senior national team, competing with boys, and now that you can see your future a little bit with Angel City, um, they, I'm sure there's going to be Angel City fans that listen to this. How would you describe your game and what you can bring to Angel City as a club on the pitch? Yeah, I think I'm a pretty speedy player. I could beat players. Um one-on-one -on -one, um, with uh, through balls from the midfield. Um, I like to go down the line and cross it into the um, forward or even like meet them 1v1 over on the, on the sideline and then take my own chance. Um, I love to score goals. So hopefully I score a lot for Angel City. Uh, yeah, I feel like I'm just like, I love to attack too, so. I love that. Let's. Um, and that's what you want in your attacker, right? So uh, it's great to hear that. <laughs> yeah, give, give her the ball. <laughs> um, let's let's close it out with a little bit of a uh, funnier. Uh, anytime we, um, you know, have a player interview, we try to just sort of close it out with a, with a more fun question. But maybe it's maybe it's a little reflective and a fun question com combined in the two because we heard you talk about players that you know you're playing alongside with now that you watched growing up, idolizing, um, and so now we're sort of entering this really unique phase this next phase of nwsl where there will be young players such as yourself entering finding themselves coming into the league um but having had a league to watch growing up as they take that next step into their professional career so what's it like sort of taking your step sort of being one of those next gen players and i got a follow-up for you when you answer that <laughs> Um, I think it's really cool that I get to be part of like this in the next generation um, players that are stepping into the NWSL. I think that I think we like have a lot to bring to and um, like we're all ready to play. And um, yeah, I'm just excited to see like 
how it is, how it's really run, like what, I have no idea. I really have no idea what anything is going to be like. So I'm super excited to just get to be able to experience it being in the pro environment. All right. So you mentioned Megan Rapino. You mentioned Alex Morgan. Those are big names. I'm, I heard you around uh, draft circle saying that you're really amped to get a chance to play alongside uh, Kristen Press and Angel City. But as someone who's coming into this league, having watched so much NWSL kind of growing up, what's a player that you're really excited to get a chance to go up against and oh, the opposition wow. side of things in this league? Go up against, yikes. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I don't really, like, what do you mean like go up against? Well, iron iron sharpens iron, right? Yeah. So like, let's imagine that, that you're along, let's, let's imagine you're along that front line. Is there a particular keeper or, or a defender that you're looking forward to maybe some individual battles on the pitch? Oh, wow. I don't know. I, All right. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Think on it. Think on I it. Will, We're going to have you back. We're going to have you back <laughs> at three, and I'm going to ask you that follow-up one more time, okay? Okay, I will. All right. This was awesome, Melissa. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. On Thank three. you. We appreciate the time. You're literally joining us from school, so we <laughs> appreciate that for sure. Thank you to everyone listening. We always love to give uh, the, the listeners a shout-out on the show. Congrats on taking this next step uh, in your professional career uh, with NWSL and Angel City. Alyssa Thomas, download, follow, and listen to Attacking Third anywhere you get your podcast. You can watch us too. Subscribe to us on YouTube to get alerts for whenever we go live. YouTube.com slash Attacking Third. For Sandra Herrera, Lisa Roman, and Alyssa Thompson, this was Attacking Third.